This video gives the solution to question 22C from the HSC Engineering Studies for 2019. This is a question that's given, and the question asks us to find the forces magnitude and nature in members N and M, as highlighted. This is the diagram given, and originally I was a bit confused when I saw this, by these dimensions on the side. Are they supposed to be 6, or are they supposed to be 9? Well, if we use the AS1100 drawing standards, it tells us that for any dimension, it's written above the line that it represents. So it would have to be 6. And we'll need to keep those sorts of things in mind when going forward with this question. There's three steps to solving it. We need to find the reaction forces, and then later on, we'll need to actually find N and M. So we'll start off with the reactions. The reactions are about these two points here. Our roller joint, at A and our pin joint at C. If we start off focusing at C, we know that it has X and Y components. And to use our equilibrium equations, we're going to need all the other forces. But don't forget that we're also going to need AY. It doesn't have an X component at point A because it's a roller joint, and so it only has that Y. There's a lot of unknowns for our Y direction, two unknowns whereas there's only one unknown in our x-direction. So we'll start off focusing with that. We know from Newton's second law that the sum of the forces is the mass times acceleration, such that the force and the acceleration are in the same direction. Using that principle, we can use x as our direction, and because we know that there's no movement in the x, our acceleration has to be zero. So now we've derived the formula that the sum of the forces in the x-direction is zero and we need to assign a positive direction because there are vector quantities, so we'll assign rightward to be positive. Since both forces act to the left, they're both negative, which means that when we rearrange for Cx, we're going to get negative three kilonewtons. We assume the force to be acting toward the left, but because we got a negative answer, we have to change that. Our assumption was wrong, so it actually acts toward the right. So we can put this back in and change the direction. Now we need to find CY. In order to find CY, we have two unknowns in the Y direction. So we want to get rid of one of those unknowns. To get rid of the unknown at, uh, at the roller joint A, we'll use moments about point A. To do moments, we'll need all the forces and distances. And we know that the moments about any point equals zero because it's not rotating. Again, we'll use a positive direction and that positive direction will be clockwise. So we have each of our forces, and we make them negative when they go against the moment, and positive when they help the moment. But what distances will we use? It has to be the perpendicular distance, and that can be a little tricky. So we'll draw lines from each of our forces, and then we'll rearrange the distances. Now that we know the distances of each of the forces, we can just put them into the formula, and we can clean that up. If we rearrange, we can get CY, and we get 4.667 kilonewtons. We assumed it to be upward and got, a positive, and got a positive answer, so it has to be upward. So if we reset our diagram, that's now what we'll use for CY. We still have AY that we need to go and find. Again, we know that the sum of the forces is the mass times acceleration, and for the same direction, so we'll use direction y, and we know there's no movement there, so the sum of the forces in the y direction has to be zero. We'll use upward to be positive, and we can see that we have all of these forces here, with only one unknown. Because we know it equals zero, we can rearrange to find that unknown, which is ay, and we get 14.333 kilonewtons. We assumed it to be up and got a positive answer, so it is indeed up. And we can put that in. So that's step one done. We've found the reactions. Now we have to find N, and we have to find M. If we look at member N, we have two ways of getting to it. We can either use method of joints or method of sections. I'm going to use method of joints, and the reason is because I know joint A quite well. It connects right to the outside of the diagram, and so it'll be easy to use method of joints here. If we focus just on this joint, we'll be able to see our unknowns and our knowns to find our answer. Now we have an issue here. We have two unknowns, N and AC, 
but it's really not that big an issue because we can split this up to have x and y components. Now we only have one x component. We know that the sum of the forces in the x direction is zero. It doesn't matter which way we assume to be positive, that means that a AC x has to be zero. And that's because there's only one force in zero. So if we use our little triangle here, it doesn't matter what value we use for theta, cos of the theta will always be the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. We know that that adjacent side is zero, so when we rearrange, we get zero for AC. That means that ACX, ACY, and AC are all zero, because it's the same force. Now, we can use the sum of the forces in the y direction is zero. Assuming upward to be positive, this would mean that our n value is negative 14.33 kilonewtons. We assumed it to be in tension because it was going away from point A. That means it's actually in compression, and we found member n. Now all we need to do is find member n. To find member m, again, we can use method of joints, or we can use method of sections. We're going to use method of sections, because using method of joints might be a little difficult here. The section we're going to use needs to cut through member m, so that we can find it. Who am I kidding? If I made the cut, it would look more like this. We can pick either the top or the bottom half, but I'm going to pick the top half. And the reason for this is that it's just going to be nicer to deal with these forces on the top half rather than these ugly forces at the bottom. We can now redraw the diagram such that it has forces at the bottom instead of just members. And we know our three formulas. So which one will we use? If we sum the forces in the x direction, we're going to get three unknowns because each of these three forces has an x component which we don't know. The same issue goes for the y direction. And we also have the formula that the sum of the moments about any point is zero. What if we try the sum of the moments about point D? We'll have two unknowns, so we don't really want to do that. But if we use point E, we'll only have one unknown. So why don't we try that? If we tr take the moments about point E, assuming that clockwise is positive, then we'll get a really ugly perpendicular distance for our force dB. But not to worry, we don't actually need to find dB, because we can use dBy instead, and that has quite an easy perpendicular distance to calculate. Again, we can draw lines from each of our forces, and we can put them in our formula. We can rearrange, and now we know dBy. We assumed it to be in tension, but we got a negative answer. The reason we assumed it to be in tension is because even though we're doing moments about point E, it connects to point D, and it's going away from point D. So therefore, we assumed it to be in tension. Because we got a negative answer, we'll have to change that so it's in compression. Which means that not only do we have to change the direction of dBy, but we also have to change the direction of dB, because dBy is the vertical component of dB, not a separate force to it. Now that we've done that, we can use our two remaining formulas to try and find the rest of the forces, particular, particularly force M. If we sum the forces in the x direction, we still have two unknowns. The forces in the y direction, again, we still have two unknowns. And we can't really do moments about point E because both of our unknown forces go through that. So we're just about done with that section. We can put it back into the diagram. What we just did is an incomplete method of sections, but we don't need to complete it. In fact, our whole method of sections didn't deal at all with member M, but we got dBy, and that's actually going to be useful, because now we can look at what we know and what we don't know with our joints around the diagram. We want member M, remember? And all the joints close to M, we either know how to do, or, like, member e, like point E, we've said that it's too difficult to do because of the number of unknowns. But this leaves something very, very clear. We haven't done anything with joint B yet. So why don't we try a method of joints at joint B? We can get rid of the um, angles for now because it's not quite helpful just yet. And we can redraw all of these to have only X and Y components. One thing we'll notice is this force here. 
When I resolved DBY earlier on, I kept it having arrowheads on the top and bottom. And I did that because when I did this in my book earlier on, I actually made a mistake. Just because DBY was assumed to be in compression before, doesn't mean that it's always going up. It means that it's always going into a joint. So we have to be very careful when we change the direction of it. That means that DB and DBY are in compression, which we got from the method of sections earlier on. Being very careful about that, we now have correct forces and we can continue to work ahead. We have our three formulas, but let's consider this. If we take the moment about B, every single force goes through it. So that would never ever make sense for a method of joints. The sum of the forces in the X direction has three unknowns. So let's not try that. And the sum of the forces in Y has one unknown. It also happens to include M, which is really, really good. If we put all of our values in, assuming upward to be positive, we know that MY is 0 0.167 kilonewtons. We assumed it to be in tension because it's moving away from point B. And because it's a positive answer, that's correct. Now, we don't actually need to go and find those X directions anymore because we're just trying to find M. Since we were given the angle, we can easily find it. Sine of any angle is the opposite, which we know, of the hypotenuse, which we don't know. Since we know the angle, we can rearrange this to find M, and we get 0 0.324 kilonewtons in tension because it's going away from the joint. That means we've now successfully found member N and member M. That's the solution to question 22C from the Engineering Studies 2019 HSC paper. Thank you.